My name is Ompolo. Uh, I'm born and bred in Town. I've lived all my life in Town. I love living in Town. This is where my heritage are. So Town means a lot to me. And I love this place. How long have you lived in Town, Ompolo? I've lived in Town since I was born. And now I'm living in Town now for 54 years. Uh, you are known as a cultural activist as well as an arts activist. Uh, what are your roles in Clip Town? Okay, all right. I'm, no, I'm known as a cultural activist, but I'm known more as a as a socialist. In the sense is that uh, the Clip Town that I grew up with, you know, the Clip Town of the past and the Clip Town of today is not the same because. I'm living now with a totally new dispensation, a new group of people. Clipton has, has transformed itself in such a way that 80% of the old people of Clipton has left. Now there's more new people in Clipton. So the reason for me is that is to make sure to bring the two, the old and the new, the old which is left and the new together, that we can embrace each other and we can have one common understanding and loving a social life together in Cape Town. So in order for me to do that, yes, I am doing the community work. I'm doing a lot of community work, especially in community development programs. Also a lot of, of, of uh, social feeding schemes, you know, uh, audience development programs, which is when we speak about culture. Audience development program in terms of, of, of cultural activities is that where you bring lots of people together and you put for them something on screen where people will come together and sit and view or stand and view and they will make friends from there onwards. Because when people openly come together, they will always have something to discuss. But if we don't run such programs, we are losing the nation building of, in our society. So it's important for us to run programs of that kind that we can bring people together and uh, have social engagements and build a nation and also combat HIV, AIDS and crime. Thank you. Uh, how has life changed in Clip Town over the years? Well, life hasn't changed as much in Clip Town because uh, environmentally, architecturally, the place is still the same in terms of that, you know. Uh, remember Clip Town since the 18th century, going up to when Club Town was proclaimed in 1903. You know, Club Town, well, Club Town has always been the place which is known as the cradle of hope and a home for refugees, you understand? Club Town itself, the place itself, is such a blessed place because it has always had the abilities to receive people and to transform their lives and then they move on. You understand? So it hasn't changed much. And I don't wish it should change because the minute is going to change, then the authenticity of Club Town will also change. The authenticity of Club Town, Club Town is one of the spaces where we know that each and everyone is welcome. In Club Town, we don't have this thing, you know, the, uh, the tendency or we don't have, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the area, the, this thing, the environment or our area protection because of foreigners, you know. A Club Town, the place of Club Town is a place where each and every South African and African and European is welcome. You understand? So I think because of that, Club Town, it does, Club Town should not change because this is who we are. You understand? It? Our code of arms, even in government, says that diverse will stand and diverse will die. So I think that uh, Club Town in the past and Club Town today, yes, there may be small elements, you know, where shakes has come in, you know, uh, uh, things, things that have changed in Club Town, you know, it's small, it's small things. You know, where people these days have cell phones, you know. Uh, I think the lifestyle, the lifestyle has changed, you understand it? But uh, the lifestyle has changed in terms of materialistic things. But in terms of the tendency, you know, the discipline, we understand, the Ubuntu, it's still the same. Okay, thank you. Uh, tell us about life in Clip Down in the early days. Well, I've been clipped down in the early days, you know, it's what we're still trying, you know, to, 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 you know, we're still trying that not to lose it even today, you understand? It was where club down was seen, even in the olden days, it was seen as one place, you know. When you say that you've got a courtyard, or you've got your own yard, club down, the whole of club down is one yard. 
the whole of Club Town is only one parent, and it's every parent. You understand? So children of Club Town are not being raised by their parents, but they have been raised by, by their, they're not being raised by their parents. They have been raised by the community, and you understand? I think those are the good things about us, because what we know is that we're, it's not to say that you won't do things in the house, but you do them outside. You are more afraid of doing them outside because each and every one has the right to your life. Each and every one has the right to correct you and to guide you. You understand? In Club Town, in the olden days, this is how we grew up. You understand? We, were, we grew up in such a way to take care of each other. And I think those are some of the things that we haven't realized, that even the apartheid government hasn't realized. They had to restore that into us to take care of each other. When our parents and great-grandparents were arrested, you understand, the people, the mothers who were at home, the grannies and the other fathers, they knew that these children doesn't have fathers at home and mothers. We had to come through, we had to step in, stand in the gap for them, that we become their biological, environmental mothers and fathers. We need to raise this community under the hand of apartheid. So that is some of the things I would say that we have taken from the apartheid government, which they never taught. They give us a strong point in that is to stand together, is to raise the children together, is to protect our community together. So those were the club down in the past. You could go in each and every house, you will find a meal. You could go in each and every house, you'll find a place to sleep. You could go in each and every house, you'll find a cup of water. Each and every person out there was a comforter, was a lifter. Thank you, thank you, Wong. Uh, Please tell us about the principles of Ubuntu and the way of living in Cliptown. The principles of Ubuntu, it is in various aspects, you understand. The principles of Ubuntu, what's important with the principles of Ubuntu is acceptance, number one. It's tolerance, number two. It's obedience, is number three. You understand? I think those are the, 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 the three. Then it's also discipline. Then it's also respect. And it's also now, when you have all these things, how do you share it amongst your community? You understand? How do you install the spirit of Ubuntu? How do we practice the spirit of Ubuntu, you understand? It's not to be angry to each other. It's to, you know, it's when someone is down, lift him up, you understand? Ubuntu is not about giving people money. It's not about giving people food, but it's to lift each other morally, socially, you understand? I think the spirit of Ubuntu is something that, that uh, you cannot go to school for. You understand? The spirit of Ubuntu is something that is in store in you. If you are someone who's a caregiver, if you are someone who's, do you understand, if you are a caregiver, number one, number two is that if you are really someone who's got passion for other people, if you are someone who, who's a, cheer, a cheerful giver, if you are someone who's a lifter, that is where the spirit of Ubuntu comes through. You understand? So, because sometimes that. Uh, you may have all the children, you may have all the gold and silver within your life, you understand, but you may not have the love, you understand, and you are not being loved, you understand, and you can't buy that. So you need to come to the ground and sit and listen and speak, you understand, and share and, and share your knowledge. The more knowledge you share, you're lifting other people. That's Ubuntu. You understand? Ubuntu is about lifting us. Let's, let's, let us love each other. Let us protect each other. Let us, you know, let us install uh, morals in each other. You know, let us not forget who we are. You understand? Let us not, let us not uh, be divided. Those are the main principles of Ubuntu. And I think that once we can give this Ubuntu, the spirit of Ubuntu, if the whole world can practice the spirit of Ubuntu, then they can remove all the borders because then we become one on this planet Earth. You understand? This is now we say no more borders, you understand? Because now we can accept each other for every culture, you know. Spirit of Ubuntu says that, you know, Cultures, spite of your culture, spite of your, your, your history, uh, spite of your, your, this thing, your beliefs, you understand, spite of your, your culture, your beliefs, your spiritual beliefs, you know, your, 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 your ways, you understand, of serving God, you know, your ways, you understand, of defining who your creator is, you know, that is personal, that is with you, but as human beings, you understand, the most important thing is that to take care of each other. Let our life not be based on money. Yeah. But let it be based on love and sharing and caring. Thank you very much, Umpolo. And in closing, when Miss Hanika de Vries was in Clip Town, uh, you were asked to uh, to to organize some accommodation for her, and you chose Aunt Cookie. 
What do you have? Maybe a special reason why you chose Aunt Cookie? Well, I think I think one of the things is I also grew up in front of Aunt Cookie, and uh, I would not say Aunt Cookie is better than anybody else because we are human beings, you know. We all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. The reason why I taught Aunt Cookie because of her hospitality. Number one, she's alone in that house, and uh, hygienically, she's a fine person. You know, and also communication-wise, you know. You must remember some of the elderly people. And Cook is fortunate because uh, she overcame that. Most of our elderly people, when they see white people, you know, the, the reflection of apartheid still kicks back. Hey, this is a white person, you know. And when, we, when they grew up, you understand, they were not so even supposed to look at the white women in the eyes. It was an offense. You understand? So because with Aunt Cookie, the type of work she does with us, community work, you know, she has a lot of uh, social skills here, the expertise, how to deal with people, and she's a very open person. So I choose Aunt Cookie because of, you know, her strength, you understand, and her, and her strength and her politics, you know, and also for her hospitality, and also being someone who's very open. Okay. Thank you very much.